Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a short tutorial on making a light bulb scene in Blender. To begin, let's add in a UV sphere. Now let's align ourselves to the Y axis and with extra mode enabled, we're just going to select the bottom half here. With G to grab and Z to the Z axis, let's drag this down by about four of these major units. Let's scale it up with S. Just like that and now we have our flare design of the glass bulb for shift a we're going to add in a new cylinder this will serve as our base let's move it up a little bit so that there's a little bit of space poking out on the side in edit mode we're going to create a few loop cuts this will serve as creating some indentations that will make our base look a little more stylish and not too plain perfect with these loop cuts in place Let's enter face select mode and just shift select these faces. Make sure that this top face also gets selected. Now we're going to hit E to extrude and escape to let go. We're going to scale this in along the X and Y axis. To do this, we're going to hit shift Z and now it will only move on the X and Y and not on the Z. So let's indent it by just a little bit like that. Perfect. Now let's go back to edge select mode. We're going to alt right click this top edge here. We only select that. And we're going to create a sloped roof. Let's extrude this upward by a little bit. Scale it inward. And we're just going to repeat this a couple more times. Just like that. To finish up our base, we're going to extrude this upward by just a little bit. Hit E to extrude once more, but release it this time. And we're going to scale this edge out. We're going to extrude it upward once more. And that is our base. Now to finish up our base, we're not going to do anything too fancy with the wiring that's going to be connected to it. All we're going to do is we're going to inset this top face with I. And we're going to extrude this upward with E along the Z axis. We're going to make this rather long because we don't want to bother with it later on while we're adjusting the composition of our um, final render. Now, right before we hop into creating the core and the filament, let's create, or rather let's set the modifiers for our glass. Let's first add a solidify modifier. I'll add a thickness of 0.05 meters. I will also add a subdivision surface modifier, which I will set to about three. Now on our base, I will first add a bevel modifier. This is just to round out these corners so they don't look too sharp. I found 0.01 works pretty good for me. Let's just put this in here. 0.01 with two segments. Next, I'll add a subdivision surface for the base as well. And I will change this to 3 as well. Now with W, I'll just shade both of these smooth. Perfect. Next, let's add in our textures. Let's first change the transmission of our glass to one and the roughness to zero. For our base, we're going to create a somewhat of a metallic look. So we're going to go over to the shaders here and select glossy. The color I'm gonna set is gonna be more of a gray look and the roughness I'll set to 0.3. I found works pretty well. Great. Now let's align ourselves with one of the axes and let's create the core piece, which will also be glass. Now with Shift A, I'm going to add in a cylinder. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Let's move it around till I find something that looks good. Something like that. Sure. Now in edit mode and edge select, I'm going to Alt to right click. I'm going to loop select these edges. I'm going to inset it with I. And while aligning ourselves up, let's extrude downward along the Z axis to about here. And we're going to finish this rod up. So let's extrude it once more, release, scale it out, extrude it downward. And that is our core. Now, right before we move on to our filament, let's add a material to our core. So we're going to reuse the glass one from before, and I'm just going to rename this. Just for future reference, just like that. 
All right, let's move on to our filament. So add in a curved circle, which I'm gonna move over on the X axis. In edit mode, hit W and subdivide this into two cuts, just like that. Next, select every other point here. And we're going to drag this up along the Z axis with G. Now our filament needs to be more straight and less curvy like this. So to fix this, come up here to the pivot point and change this to individual origins. Next, select all these points and scale this down to 0 0.3, just like that. Perfect. Now let's just move this back into our light bulb. So I'm going to align myself to the axis here. I'm going to move it over down here. Doesn't have to be too perfect. I'm going to scale this along the X and Y like we did before by hitting Shift Z. Now let's scale it up on the Z axis a little bit. Just like that, perfect. Next, let's add in our emission shader to our filament because we want it to glow, of course. So come over to the materials, add a new material, and we're gonna change our principled shader to an emission shader. Now the color we're gonna choose is more of an orangey color to get a warm light. We're gonna change the strength to 1000. Next, because our filament is rather 2D here, we're going to add some thickness to it. So come over to uh, the curve properties over here and down over at the bevel, we're going to add 0 0.01. And just like that, we have a little bit of thickness along this curve. Perfect. Now we're going to hit W and convert this filament to mesh. Now what we can do is select the top portions here. Whoops, center edit mode. Select the top portions here. Also down here. This is only because a lot of times in Edison bulbs like these, you won't often have a glowing, um, a glowing filament at the ends where it will connect to the core. Not all do this, but uh, for my tutorial today, I will change this. So come over to your materials here and add in a new material. And we're going to select the glass material from earlier. Now what we're going to do is hit assign. And what's going to happen is that only in these highlighted regions, there will be no emission. There will be no light and it will just be glass. All right. So just to finish up our modeling here, let's add a subdivision surface modifier to smoothen out the curve, which I'll change to, I say two. Also, let's hit W and shade it smooth. Perfect. Now we have our light bulb finish. Now, right before we jump into setting up our scene, let's first go over here and change our render engine to the cycles and our device to GPU. If you have a GPU, of course, make sure to select it. I'm going to change the render samples to 400 and enable denoising. Perfect. Now let's get started by adding the wooden wall, which is going to sit behind the light bulbs. So add in a plane, which I will just scale up to a random amount. I'm going to drag this window up from the bottom and go to the node editor, the shader editor over here. Add a new material. And we're going to first start off by introducing three image textures. So add one and with shift D, you can duplicate this twice. Perfect. First, we're going to add in our actual wood texture, the color, and we're going to connect this to base color. Second, let's add in our roughness map, which will affect light reflections. Next, and just connect this directly to the roughness node. Third, we're going to add in our normal map. So this is, it kind of introduces bumps and details in our wood without actually introducing the geometry for it. So open up your normal map here upload that and with shift a we're going to add in a normal map node let's put this in the middle we're going to connect color to color and normal to normal just like that that's up let's just fix up the wooden wall background so to do this i'll just rotate this with r on the y-axis by 90 degrees and i will just move this back along the x-axis like that and I'll just scale it up even more. Perfect. Next, let's get uh, started on the camera. 
So how I choose to have this render kind of looking is having one light bulb in the foreground, followed by one in the mid and one in the background. To achieve this depth of field effect, we're going to have to go over to the camera settings and enable depth of field. I choose to have a low f-stop of something like 0.2 because a low f-stop means a low depth of field which means a lot of blur and that's the effect I'd like. Also I'll increase the focal length to something high like say 160 but because of the increased focal length we're going to need to move the camera back a lot more. So I'll just drag this back here. Also what I'll do is I'll split this window up into two. So what essentially we can have is one camera view, so I can see what's going on here as I set it up. So this is clearly pointing in the wrong direction, so I will hit N after going to the camera view of course. I'll hit N, view, and lock this camera to view. So while I'm trying to figure this out, just like that, I'll just move the camera around a little bit. But you see, as I zoom out a little bit, the light bulb disappears. That is due to clipping. So you can fix this really easily. Just come over back to your camera settings and change the end clipping to something really large, like 10,000 meters, for example. So this allows us to see our wood uh, panel in the background and our light bulb in the foreground. All right, so I think this is looking pretty interesting. If I go into material view here, well, all right. One thing I forgot to add is that we need to set up our focus object. So to do that, I'll just hit the dropper tool here and just select something like the cylinder over here. And now we can see that it is finally in focus. So this is exactly what we would like. So let's leave our camera behind and let's develop our theme a little bit more. So let's leave this light first. I don't know why it's there. But let's select our light bulb here and let's duplicate it twice. So with Shift D like before, we're going to duplicate it and we can duplicate it once more. So now it's just going to be a little bit of adjustment and I may just forward this a little bit as I figure out where to put them. Alright, so I just went ahead and moved these light bulbs around a little bit, and I'm pretty happy with this final arrangement. So I went to render view a few times just to determine the blurriness of the filaments, and that was to figure out where the mid-ground and background really are in relation to the foreground, but I'm pretty happy with this. So now let's move on to lighting. So the main source of light I'm going to use is an HDRI, and just like with the wind texture, the link to the HDRI will be in the description below. That being said, let's come over to the World tab and over to the color, let's hit this yellow button and select the environment texture. So upload your HDRI texture. For me, I chose a 4K version with the EXR extension. Let's check out how it looks in the render view. Alright, that looks pretty cool. So. Let's add a few more lights that I'm going to use to highlight the center one. The first of those lights is going to be more of a softer light that will appear above. So let's just move this over here. Let's move it up. And I'll just grab this yellow ball and point it down. So again, this is supposed to be more of a softer light. Now let's come over to the light properties and set the strength to 1000. Second, let's add a new area light. Let's move it over, increase the size, and this one will be coming in from an angle. Just like that. The power of this one will be about 10,000. Now if we take a look in render view, let's see what it looks like. Alright, it's not looking that bad. I think we can just adjust the light a little bit, just moving it down and then a little bit closer and uh, I think that should be good. Now right before I end off and render the final image, I would like to add one last thing. And that is, I would like to add a little bit of 
a warm glow around the filaments of the light bulbs because overall I believe that Edison light bulbs and their warm color evokes a feeling of warmth and I like to sort of replicate that. So to do that I'm, I'll come over to the compositing tab here. I will enable use nodes and after I drag this out I will add in a glare node and I'll drop it right in between. Change this first menu to fog glow and make sure you have the threshold set to 1 and the size set to 8. So right before we just render this, I would like to just double check the HDRI that I put in. You know what, I think we should change the strength of this HDRI to something darker. Because if we would like to really see the glow and see the warmth, the lighting should be somewhat more dim. So I'll just drop this to 0.5 and let's give it a render. Here is the final render. I hope you all can see what I meant by adding a warm glow around the filament, which we added using the glare node. But nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you have any recommendations of other topics you'd like covered or any questions of sorts, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more video from myself or some of my friends, make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you all in the next one.